Fine, and again, uh, a big thank you to Russ Crocker for coming in and uh, giving his uh, insight on what is happening with Hamilton Paramedic Services. And of course, please remember, March is Brain Injury Month. Look after that head of yours if you're in sports or, or any type of uh, activity where you might have to be a little more cautious. With all that said now, it's getting a little warm in here. I, I can only understand why the heat's here. That's why now. That's why. I got Chief Bergen with me and Will Mason, both from Hamilton Police Services. Wonderful to see you both today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. I'm going to just put a shout out on about brain injury. Is yes. I had an actual very severe accident on a bike in 2015, and I was not wearing a helmet. It was up at the cottage on a gravel road, and I had a, received a concussion, etc. Everyone wear a helmet. So was Absolutely. it just one of these fluke things where you're on your ATV or whatever? You just want to kind of get from A to B? And yeah, it's, it's actually even more simpler than that. As I yeah. took a took a bike out of the rafters that my nephew had put a gas engine on, and I got it going, and I thought it'd be fun to go down the road and uh, I woke up in the hospital with a catastrophic injury uh, because I wasn't wearing a helmet. Wear a helmet. And that's all it takes. That's yeah. all it takes. Thank you for that message. Thanks for passing along that story. Uh, before we get to you, Will, one more thing out of you, uh, Chief. The police budget. Whew. It's been passed. You're moving on. You get to enjoy a life for another nine, ten months before you have to do uh, the, that. Uh, the, the, the truth is, Mike, uh, <laughs> uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the, the council. I'd also like to thank our board for the support of our budget. Um, very, very um, vibrant discussions that talk about police budgeting, and we appreciate that. We need to hear from our community about the impact of policing in our community. We actually had a great meeting this week as well about that impact, and hopefully have a chance to talk about policing this amazing city. But it doesn't stop. Uh, it, we'll be already starting our budget deliberations moving into the spring. We uh, really get well into that, into April and May, when we actually start having our commander conversations about what does the budget pressures look like like each division without uh, within our organization so never stops we always got to be talking about the price of policing and making sure that we can be efficient but we also are going to be where people need us to be and of course our city is growing expanding police need to be everywhere at any given time mr. Mason let's uh, let's kick things off now with you my friend April 1st sure. is new community uh, safety policing uh, the new act is coming in place. Apparently this yeah. took about 12 years to finally get to where it's at. So there, there's been discussions about updating the Police Services Act, which has been the guiding act for police in Ontario for quite some time. Uh, so come April 1st, the Community Safety Policing Act will come into to force. And there's a whole host of regulations that come along with that. Um, my particular area is training and uh, professional standards. Um, and the act will have significant impacts on those areas. So it brings into place some very standardized and very specific training pieces that we have to meet uh, as part of the act. Fortunately, we're reasonably well positioned uh, in Hamilton to do uh, a lot of that work, and we've already started pre-planning for a lot of those things. And then it's going to change a number of things in our disciplinary process. Um, just in terms of how disciplines are, how complaints are taken in, how reporting works and all of those type of things. So uh, some large changes, a lot of them will be uh, internal for us. Increased training is always a good thing. Uh, it, training is always very expensive in terms of a cost of pulling officers on the, off the road and having them sit in a classroom, and we do look at creative ways of delivering those type of things. And I hear what you're saying, and I know there's people out there probably saying, yeah, you know, it costs way too much, but, but there, is, there is a cost to police, and there's a cost to police effectively, and you can't always learn that if you're always working. You've got to take that time out of your day and learn how to do things more effectively if, if those if that stuff comes your way. No, and, and you're quite right, Mike, and uh, you know, thanks for touching on that. It It's certainly, if we don't do training, the cost of not doing the training oh. and the risk uh, associated with not doing that training far outweighs the upfront cost of doing the training in the first place. It's a... It's an investment, and it's an investment in the officers, and that turns into an investment in our community. And it's an ongoing investment year. Certainly, yes. We Everybody up to and including the chief goes for annual training yeah. um, in a number of legislated areas, and we touch up on uh, a number of other areas to make sure that everybody's current, uh, everybody understands, because the law is continually changing. Legislation gets updated, and we need to be on top of all of that. And of course, this is this is great timing too, as you're always looking for new recruits, 
uh, and sure. you'll be extending your staff a little bit more too. Yeah, so certainly there's a there's a big recruiting drive on in Hamilton, and the training branch gets involved in that in terms of onboarding and training all our new recruits, whether that's cadets, special constables, or uh, actual police officers, and as well some of our civilian staff. Uh, there's lots of opportunity available in the Hamilton Police Service right now, so anybody who's interested, I'd encourage you to check out recruiting on our website uh, or on social media. You can find us quite easily. But uh, that training, when new recruits come into the service, they start with a three-day orientation with us. Then they do three weeks of online training, uh, and that's facilitated through the Ontario Police College. Then they go up to the Police College for 11 weeks of training. They come back to us. We do an additional seven weeks of training in class that's spread out over a period of time. And they also spend three months with a coach officer. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot invested up front into making sure that we get it right and to make sure that the recruits understand and are comfortable with everything that they've learned because it is a, it's an entirely unique profession and they have to learn all these different aspects from the practical things such as use of force, um, safe use of firearms, safe use of their use of force equipment, to all the legislative pieces that go along yeah. with that the law, testifying in court, and all of those type of things. And I think that is one thing the general public sometimes forgets. that they, they, they think of the police that they're just there, there to protect and serve. Yes, but they have to retain so much information about all the acts. And now you're saying, saying so many of these are going to change. You, you can't just walk in and just be arresting people and going in and breaking up crowds. You've got a lot to do up here. No, for sure, and, and that's just the what we think of as the traditional, yeah. um, the traditional role of police. But there's always, and, and as we always talk about, we get called to all kinds of things that people might not think about the police going to. So, for instance, all our new recruits get crisis intervention training, yep. which is uh, training to deal with people with um, mental health uh, issues. Uh, and how to de-escalate those situations. That's training that has evolved over time and we make sure all of our new recruits get that so that when they hit the road, they're prepared to deal with those situations. It's sometimes not a, uh, a call that people traditionally think of the police going to and we know we're only one yep. partner in that call. Russ Crocker, who was just here, uh, EMS is a big partner in those calls as well, as well as the hospital services. But we're one piece to play, but we need to know how to play our role. Play our role and everyone play 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 together nicely in the sandbox, if you will. We, we got sure. under a minute, and I'm so sorry. This has been so fascinating, though. The Community Advisory Panel for Race and Identity-Based Strategy, that's in place. Maybe, Chief, we can start with you on this one? Yeah, in place is a little bit of a, a, a strong word. Is It's in development, and what we're asking the public to do is to, I believe a QR code is going to be posted, is we're asking the public to participate in making sure as we assemble a panel of community advisors to tell us what can we do better. Well, we've heard over the years, whether it's in use of force or strip searches, is that they, there is questions about what most motivates what bias does a police officer bring the amazing work the superintendent mason and their cadre of people in training they also are impacted by court challenges and changes yeah. we need the public to tell us what should we be looking at what data do we need now more than ever everyone wants data so the race identity based data is based on the ontario human rights commission and we're working with it and we had an amazing community meeting over 130 people came out to tell us what they would like to see now we need them to co-work with us and collaborate on making sure that we can bring that to the city of Hamilton so that we can all move forward together in a very safe environment. To both of you, thank you very much for coming in. And I can only wait and, and look forward to when those results do come in. And no doubt it is going to be a process like everything thank is, you. right? Uh, Mr. Mason, uh, Chief Bergen, thank you both so much for being in here. More Frontline when we come back right after this.